hello everybody, this is Scott Roberts. Uh, this is uh, the Explorer Alliance live presentation of the OpenGoTo community. And it's our 100th episode, so that's really cool. Um, we really wanted to thank you know, all of you that have watched our programs. Uh, I'm seeing some of you have watched all of them. Uh, some of the, you have watched most of them. Uh, you know, you've made this possible uh, and uh, We'll be going way beyond 100 programs, but uh, this one's special for us. So we are celebrating today. We are going to have a special question and all the rest of it. But before we get into all of that, I wanted to introduce or reintroduce our special guest, uh, Mariska Straw, who is the executive director of um, World Space Week. And um, World Space Week uh, was uh, held October 4th of the 10th. Um, Mariska, thanks for coming on our program. And um, so how did it go? I, I, I think you had a, a pretty good turnout. Hi, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, yes, absolutely. The, the turnout was amazing. It exceeded our expectations on, on every, every level. Um, so far, we have thousands of events in, in the calendar, in the official calendar. We will go over, over the events, over the registrations to make sure they comply with the guidelines and that there are no duplicates. But um, if everything goes goes like planned, and um, if the the calendar was efficiently, you know, uh, making sure that everything is really the way it has to be done, then we will be seeing a, a very, 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 very large number of events this year as well, which is uh, pretty fantastic given the circumstances. I have to say that uh, most of the events in, right. in comparison to other years were virtual. They were held online. Um, so it was not just um, that the number of events was larger. This probably means that there were more participants as well because people could join different events regardless of their location. So that was, I think, um, also a, a very, very good outcome for, for World Space Week and for the participants, of course. Right. Now, the theme this year was um, uh, the benefits of uh, satellites um, and satellite technology. Uh, what, what were some of the uh, more interesting uh, events in your mind? So, yeah, we had our theme this year was Satellites Improve Life. And there were many events that were absolutely interesting and uh, I think are worth mentioning. I cannot remember all of them because there were really so many and we are absolutely grateful to everyone who participated and for organizations to, to organize uh, events. Also to our partners that participated. Um, to mention a few, I would, uh, I would mention the webinar that was organized, uh, actually a series of webinars that, was, that were organized by the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs. ITU organized uh, webinars, Expo 2020 Dubai hosted a virtual space week, NASA Kennedy Space Center um, had, uh, had events and uh, also Space for Women uh, Network had, had webinars and there were many other organized by space agencies and, and uh, other, other organizations. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And so, um, uh, do you think that um, going forward, I mean, do you think that uh, this pandemic, of course, that's, that was maybe the reason for so many virtual events, but uh, do you think that, um, that going forward, even after we overcome the pandemic problem, do you think that there will be more virtual events? Um, uh, did they, were people able to reach a bigger audience or, uh, how, how do you think that uh, this change has has had some benefit? How do you think the beneficial side? What I would really like to see is a combination. Um, a lot of a lot of events in person where people can actually get together and celebrate space and the theme that we're gonna be declaring in the next years, because I think that has an immense value, uh, both for for the association and also for everyone who's participating in, in World Space Week. But I also see a lot of value and uh, contribution of virtual events because it allows people to really join even if there are you know, any kinds of constraints logistically or you know, whatever. Um, and that still gives you, gives you a chance to participate and be a part of something really big. 
and international and a part of a huge network. If you look at, I mean, just if we look at our social media, we had on Twitter in that week alone, we had 200 million oh. individual impressions. Wow. 200 million. 200 million impressions. Last year, it was about 2 million. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And this year, this happened. 100 because, times. Exactly, because we were all, you know, home and doing stuff online and present. So I think there is there is an immense value to this. And if joined together with in-person events, I, I think it's going to be, you know, just that would be the ultimate mind blowing. Yeah. Yes, I believe yeah. so. So, uh, you know, in the United States, I, I often talk to people about World Space Week and even to other organizations as well. And, uh, uh, you know, some some have heard of World Space Week uh, and what they do. Um, I think a lot of them are shocked to know that it is the world's largest uh, you know, uh, space festival celebration that goes on, you know? Um, and I think that, uh, you know, learning about it and us doing um, uh, more awareness of it, at least on our side, uh, through the channels that we have, that I think that uh, some other clubs and organizations uh, should be getting involved. Uh, one of those organiza organizations I'm going to try to uh, encourage to somehow get involved with World Space Week is the Astronomical League. So we are, I'll be talking to them. Um, they have, um, oh, like 300 and some odd clubs in a federation, you know, in the United States, and they're starting co to go international. They're not, in, they're not international like you guys are, but, uh, but I think that uh, it would be very interesting for them. And... Uh, uh, you know, World Space Week should be like a series of official worldwide holidays for anyone interested in space and astronomy, you know, or curious about stargazing or want to know more about the universe. So, you know, I think that that's great. Um, what do you think that, um, uh, you know, if, if you were going to say in, in, a, in a nutshell, you know, what, what, what do you think that most people in the aftermath of, of this, uh, this um, uh, particular year in World Space Week, uh, what, do, what do you think that they're left with? What do you think their feeling is? Or what was the, the most important aspect to them? Um, you mean in, in um, regard to World Space Week? I think... Yes, I think yes. No, I, mean, I know I asked you a very general I, I think, question. So I can answer but, this from my from my personal point of view. It's very difficult to to talk about yeah. participants because they are so different. You know? Because we really have um, a lot of young people. We also have, you know, um, adults. Uh, we have children. We have employed people. We have students. There is a really large number of people participating. So to to say. What is common to all of them is just interest in space. Everything else, I, I, I cannot answer. But in my, in my view, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I think that the most important thing that came out of this is that regardless of all the difficulties that we had, and yeah. I think there's not a single person who didn't, have, who didn't struggle in one way or the other, we still managed to get together and staying connected and and knowing that regardless of what happens, there is a way to, to stay a part of something so big with something we have in common, which is interest in science, interest in space, you know, inspiration, imagination. That for me, that's very reassuring. I, I think it also gives hope that uh, people still think about these things and uh, you know, that we're gonna get out of it. Out right. Of the situation. Right. Well, it will happen. It's, and it's, uh, you know, I think that um, uh, I think astronomers and people interested in, in our universe, you know, they'd, it's been said it time and time again, these like the global star parties we've done, uh, other events that we've done. Uh, when I talk to uh, people from professional astronomers to researchers to uh, uh, beginner amateur astronomers, the one thing that they get is they understand that this is this is unifying 
you know, this is unifying, it's inclusive. And, um, you know, I know that that's something that is near and dear to your heart is uh, the inclusiveness of this and, uh, you know, gender equality, um, uh, you know, lack of discrimination because, you know, we are, we're all in this global humanity uh, experience, you know, the one, the one conduit that we have that's very obvious is that we all have one sky, we breathe the same air, these kinds of things. I know that sounds a little tongue in cheek, but it's true and we know it, you know, so, um, I, and I'm so I, I grateful that there's something like World Space Week that exists. I, I could not agree with you more. I think space is one of the rare um, places or examples, regardless of how you want to call it, where yeah. everyone has to work together. Hmm. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how old you are. Gender doesn't matter. And when I say everyone, I literally mean everyone. It's not just astronomers. It's not just you know lawyers. It's not just um, scientists. It's also musicians. It's artists. It's really everyone. Everyone can contribute and everyone is needed if we really want to have presence outside of, of our planet. You know? That's right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, that's wonderful. So uh, have you, has the organization already announced what the next year's theme will be for World Space Week? Yes, 2021 is going to be exciting for us. Um, the theme for next year is going to be Women in Space. Women in Space. Yes, Ms. Lisa Callahan, the VP of Lockheed Martin, is our honorary chair, and we are super excited to work with them and um, see what the year brings. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I hope to get you back on before, uh, uh, you know, uh, before October of next year uh, so that we can talk about World Space Week and all the excitement that's going on. But if you think that you would like to get involved uh, somehow, I think that... Uh, uh, World Space Week would embrace, uh, uh, you know, hearing about your idea and your proposal. And um, so you could go to, and let me put it up on the chat so you can see it. It's worldspaceweek.org. Very yeah. easy to remember. You can also reach us through our social media channels. We are very responsive and uh, we love to talk to, to, to people, to participants, to organizations, to potential partners. So. This is, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that, um, that you're also promoting us and uh, most wow. definitely for 2021, I hope we, we continue this discussion because we really want to inspire, uh, especially young women to, yes. to join and to participate and be more involved with science. I think it's going to be beneficial for everyone. We want that too. We want that too. That's awesome. Maruska, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add before? Where are going to this the... is, I, I think this is it. I can just say thank you for the invitation. Thank, uh, you. thank you for everyone who participated. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what next year brings. All right. That's great. Have a nice evening. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. All right. So, um, well, that was interesting. Um, we... Uh, um, we will move on. Uh, we, we have a little bit of ground to cover here today. I, I will tell you that uh, we have, uh, uh, as you probably have already seen in the announcements, that we will have our 19th Global Star Party tonight. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock with uh, David Levy and David J. Iker from Astronomy Magazine. Um, we also have Libby and the Stars and Deepti Deep Gautam from... Uh, Nepal. She'll be giving her third installment of her three-part series. Uh, I think we're probably, uh, David Iker has a 17-part uh, series going on, and I think this is now his third or fourth time on, so it's really cool. Um, we, I think it's his third uh, time. Maybe his third time. Or I missed a couple of star parties, so it's probably his fourth time. I didn't. I think it's his fourth time. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's great. Um, uh, he's, uh, I think his, his last uh, talk was about the death of the sun, you know, so um, we'll see if he uh, continues down that path of destruction. <laughs> but it is the story of, you know, how the universe works. You know, you have to have stars that, uh, 
that that pass on and and pass on all the elements and stuff that they created inside of them. I think that our sun and our planets are. I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that we're like from a fourth generation uh, supernova event. You know, so uh, that's really the first time when you said that last week. That was the first time I ever heard that and thought about that way. I mean, because you always think about supernovae creating all these elements but and it's you always i always assume that it was the first time it's all fresh right right off one right. Oh, yeah, it's fresh right out of the it's oven fresh right? and then that's the only one right for us but it's not it's like this stuff comes together it and really, goes blows up it can't be because the sun has got so it's, many elements in it and um, it's so old right and so it's we're five billion years old and this universe is 14 almost 14 billion that's right that's right so you know, I had to, you know, it's, it was probably a combination of supernova, uh, remnant material colliding, and then making a richer and richer um, situation happen. So, so here we are, you know, and we, we're these little guys uh, making polishing lenses and, you know, looking back up there and trying to figure it all out, you know. Well, so. it's the universe. It's the universe observing itself. That's what I've heard it called. That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> very uh very philosophical i would say let's all take a minute and think about that <laughs> that's right have a moment of silence <laughs> if i can only be quiet about it so no but it's this is true this is true so you know because we're we're we are hardwired and part of the universe you know for sure that's right. we're not separate that's right. from it so um you know, it is our 100th anniversary. Let me look at some of the uh, people who are on with us today. We've got James, the astrophotographer. Um, we've got uh, Richard Grace. He says, congratulations on our 100th. Ollie Crabtree uh, says, good night. Um, we have Mike Wiesner. Hi from the clear sky of Arizona. It's observatory night, he says. Well, that's great. <clears throat> Arietta Dagudi, Dagudi um, says hello. We've got uh, Jeff Wise on with us. Wolfgang, of course. Uh, Dusty says good afternoon. A hundred days with me so far, you lucky people. <laughs> That's great. Um, Marco Polo says happy 100. Uh, Mike Wiesner says congratulations on the amazing run of 100. Very educational and entertaining episodes. Thank you, Mike, that's very kind. Um, and he says, great job by the entire team. It's hard uh, to come up with new stuff every day. Well, well we got you, Jerry. <laughs> I don't know how new I am, but I appreciate that. Your material <laughs> never dies out. We're gonna talk about this time, right? So, but there is always something new, you know, but there's also things that we got to talk about it again and again, because you got people who are new to the show and watching it and right. you know they weren't there for the first episode right which means that we probably need to go back and redo all of our demonstration videos that we did okay with uh for the um you know how to operate explore stars uh that kind of thing and we've gotten a little bit better on the uh, technical side of broadcasting so maybe we can have a, a better broadcast instead of some sort of blurry screen looking at a tablet or something we can actually share right. that data right uh, right uh stefan del praz watching congratulations uh pekka has now started watching regularly pekka's from stockholm sweden um he says congratulations um wolfgang wants to know if someone from france is here yeah. i don't know i'm not sure about that yeah hard to say hard to say could be they're probably watching in the background. Uh, and of course, Tyler Bowman is with us both in chat and actually on the program itself. So we're going to go to him. And he's our favorite. He's our favorite actor for our commercials. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I, you know what? I think I forgot <laughs> to add your astrophotography commercial. So you're going to have to actually do it live for us. And we have to talk about it. I don't know what you're so talking about. You don't know. You remember that astrophotography contest thing? Remember oh that? yeah, yeah, that video. I keep getting. We 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 released the holiday video, and Keith has come up 
with since I wore the plaid shirt and I have the big scruffy beard. I'm Billy Mays. Oh, that's Billy right. Mays. Yeah, Billy Mays. Yeah. It's uncanny. Yeah. It's uncanny. Yeah, I am Billy Mays. You made up a new word. <laughs> and who is Billy Mays? Billy Mays was you know a... Billy Mays? <laughs> I don't watch TV. So. <laughs> I'll try to pull up a comparison Man, for you. Television, right? <laughs> I'll make a comparison for you. Give me a minute. He... He made a bunch of infomercials on different products. Oh, okay. He was an oh, iconic plat. I mean, you watched Tim the Toolman Taylor, right? Oh yeah. Okay, you got uh, what was his uh, his right hand man Al, not Al. What was his name? I can't think oh, of his flex, name. The Flex Seal guy. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, Oxy I have seen Flex. No, the OxyClean guy. The OxyClean Oxy, guy. OxyClean. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of like a, a modern, a more modern day Ron Popeil of Ronco. Now, I did meet Ron Popeil. I used to do, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what's the online shopping? QVC. QVC. Yeah, QVC. QVC. Yeah, I met, I met Ron Popeil. I met. <laughs> These guys don't know who. Old, right? But uh, it wasn't so long ago. It was probably 20 years ago. Um uh, uh, and I met, uh, who was the big, uh, George Foreman. Met oh yeah. Him. With the grill. George Foreman was a gentleman. He was. Ron Popeil didn't have a lot of time for me. He was busy. So he, he made a thousand products and sold them just like Billy Mays. Yeah, that's right. I've got a good comparison if you want to see it. Yeah. I, you know, Tyler, I don't think you're like, you got to see it. I don't think you're like, no. you got to see it. It's true. You got to see it. You go ahead, Heath. Go ahead. Do it. Do it, Heath. Pop it up it, there. Heath. Pop it up there. Pop it up there. Let's have. Yeah. Let's everybody have a chuckle at my expense. So y'all are all welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the holiday gift guide. That's right. Let's see it. Let's see if he can play it. Oh no, he can't play it. He's showing you the candy comparison between Billy Mays and then oh. my big ugly mug. I see. That's Billy Mays to the left. That's right. You sure you're not Billy Mays? I don't know where my checks are then, if that's the case. <laughs> well, yeah, Billy Mays unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Yes, he did. Hmm. Too bad. But Enough Tyler about can... that. Enough about that. Let's talk about this astrophotography photography contest. Yeah. So that went live couple days ago uh, if everybody's having issues finding it you can go to our website at explorescientific.com and it is a scrollable banner on the main page i'll give my link directly to it how about that that'll work how about that how about that how about that and it is also a drop down under the alliance plus drop down and it's under the events and experiences as well mm -hmm. Here we go. You need to <laughs> you need to play Jimi Hendrix. Are you experienced when that when you pop up that that window? They'll they'll, they'll cut this video if I do that. Uh, Copyright. No. Copyright. Yeah. <laughs> the Hendrix family will shut me down. They'll so. they'll shut Explore Scientific down, and we'll be all be out of a job. That's right. Here we go, Jerry. And I'll owe them a million dollars. <laughs> and we're also getting ready for Black Friday sales. Um, I have to dress up for that. I don't know what I'm going to dress up as, though. Uh, dress up but... as Billy Mays. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be easy. <laughs> with the blue butt, blue button-down shirt and the white pants. Uh -huh. Oxy clean T-shirt. Yeah, they were they were khakis. Come on now. Okay, khakis. All right. Uh, Colorblind Jerry. But no, that's what we're working on here over at Explore Scientific is the Cyber Monday, Black Friday deals, the holiday gift guide's already out, the photography contest is already up and running, so I haven't seen images, and I'm kindly disappointed with all of you. Very disappointed. Uh-oh. So... When Tyler's disappointed. I, <laughs> I hurt people. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't hurt anybody, <laughs> but it, that's the not, whole premise of this. I want to see astrophotography images from our guys. That's what I want. I want the community to come together, and I want to see what you can do. That's the whole point. That's right. He'll come. I don't know. 
other than that, they'll come. Groups IO is pretty dead, which is amazing. I guess Jerry must have said something to everybody in secret. Oh, no, there's know. something called the election going on right I've, now. Oh, dear Lord, think, why do we have to bring think, up that? No <laughs> politics. <laughs> No politics. No, pol no politicking. No politics. I'm just you saying. Don't, no, you don't need a politicking. Just saying. Happening. Yeah, no politicking. Um, I was wanting to test out some uh, customers' mounts, but it clouded out. Yeah, so Scott's not going to be doing anything. I'm not going to be doing anything because it clouded over. That's true. That's we great here. Not. Great here tonight. Good. Maybe Jerry can do some imaging as well. Get some testing done for us. He didn't send me any test the equipment. He didn't send to me test. anything to test. We can talk about it later in chat. <laughs> <laughs> I did send you a private message, Scott, about what we were talking about I, I last night. I see it. I see it. Uh, oh, yeah. also the question. The question I sent the question. It's it's a it's a. That's I guess right. a tough question. Right. I, and I I've got I, I've got a reason well, for why I picked that question. There's a couple of things we talked about. You know, one of the things that we talked about, and, and let's just reel this back a little bit. You remember I was on Wikipedia recently. That's always dangerous. <laughs> I, I was reading about um, uh, William Herschel, okay, and the 40-foot refractor, okay? Now, this 40-foot this refractor, I, I got to pull this up because... That's, you know, the focal, that's the focal length, right? Yeah, it's the focal length. That's right? not the mirror. No. <laughs> it was a big mirror. Yeah. It was a big mirror. William Herschel. Here we go. A dashing looking guy, you know, with his curls and, you know, his, his scarf around his neck and stuff. Um, I should dress up like him sometime. Uh, anyways, this guy was very prolific, uh, made lots of telescopes. He made hundreds of telescopes. They sold telescopes, okay? You could have, during his time, you could have bought a Herschel telescope. Um, uh, but uh, his biggest and most famous telescope was the 40 foot. And this telescope had a 49 and a half inch primary mirror made out of copper and tin. And this made a metal called speculum. OK, uh, when it was built, it was, uh, you know, a triumph of human perseverance and zeal uh, for the sublimest science. That's how it was described. Uh, so in 1785, Herschel approaches King George for money to cover the cost of building a 40 foot telescope. He got four thousand uh, pounds, but it took five years and he did go over budget. Uh, how over budget he went, I'm not sure. Um, but um, he had, you know, he had all kinds of workmen and laborers and, and carpenters and people to build this. The tube, this 40 foot long tube was made out of cast iron. I mean, this thing had to be like ultra heavy. Um, it was, they say the tube was large enough to walk through. Mirror blanks were poured from speculum metal, a mix of copper and tin that were this uh, 49 and a half inch uh, diameter and each one of those mirrors weighed a thousand pounds, okay? So when the disc was deformed due to its weight, so it's so, so heavy in the telescope that it starts to deform, this is gonna change the, the quality of the image, okay? Uh, so that what they would do is they'd have to make a new one and they would pour it thicker or, you know, change the content of copper and tin to get the, the uh, you know, the, the mixture right and all the rest of it. Um, uh, and they had to hand polish, hand polish this mirror to get that shine, okay? And right after you've polished it, I mean, it would start to oxidize, you know, so... I think that at the time uh, that people are using these speculum mirrors, um, uh, uh, like uh, Lord Ross uh, also used speculum mirrors in their, his giant Leviathan telescope, they had to change the mirror out every two weeks, okay? So you, would, you were removing a mirror, um, uh, you know, getting that, that next mirror ready and then cycling it through. The, 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 I can't even pronounce it right. The Leviathan 
telescope had its mirror changed out, uh, like I said, about every two weeks. I think they had seven mirrors that they were constantly working mm. on. So this is a heck of a lot of work, okay? Imagine if you had to repolish the mirror in your telescope, you know, um, oh, I don't know, let's say even once a year, okay? Uh, <laughs> it would be such a hassle that you would probably never do it, okay? Um, uh, you know, I mean, it would, this this took ultra dedication. Uh, so you know, so when the when the mirror got deformed or or tarnished, it had to be removed, repolished, replaced in the apparatus. Okay, and they had this huge rotating platform to build to support the telescope, so they could reposition it. So uh, now this is a telescope that didn't have a diagonal. Uh, Herschel didn't like. Newtonian telescopes, he preferred front view telescopes. So they would have the mirror slightly tilted so that you could be off to the side looking at the image, okay? So that meant that you had to be in a platform that was up at the top of the telescope in total darkness, okay? Looking down at the mirror as you have people repositioning this whole building, okay, down below. Um, it's uh, it's amazing that they got any work done at all through this telescope, um, but um, you know, so I would say that that learning curve of having to learn how to repolish a mirror, uh, keep it from being deformed, uh, was um, was something that uh, uh, definitely uh, was a was a. A, a, a problem and uh, you know and we complain about having to learn how to use Nina okay so <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah it's like yeah this technology is just amazing what we can do today for next to nothing really is what it comes down to right right so um, we're so spoiled so, oh I know I know so Heath, you're on with us today. Thank you for being on our hundredth episode as well. You know, it's, yeah, thanks for having uh, it's me. great to have you on. Uh, uh, what's been going on in in your world in tech support? Uh, actually, I've been out all day unloading trucks. Unloading <laughs> trucks. <laughs> yeah, okay. and I'm exhausted. So. I bet you are. Yeah. So we've got some cool things in though. Yeah. So Go ahead. I said we got some cool things in. Um, I know we got. Uh, we got some uh, more scopes in, so I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be good. So. Great. So we have That's, more inventory in. And yeah. At a time, inventory is tough to get in, uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, astronomy world today. So that's. We also got something I'll, I'll uh, give you a little tease about. We, uh, a while ago, announced weather stations and mm -hmm. atomic oh, clocks and good. that kind of thing. And so those are starting to come in at this point and um, uh, one of them is called a, a five and one weather station so if you're thinking about weather stations um, you know you might think about us uh, uh, I've approached Kent and um, we will be offering a special deal to Explore Alliance members uh, to get uh, one of these weather stations at a special price so I think that uh, you might be interested in that um, I'm interested in one of those too. I want to do some work on it, right? We talked about. That's right. Integrating it into our into, uh, into our system. That's right. Right. Creating an ASCOM driver for it. Right. I want to put one on the Barbara Jean, you know, so we'll, uh, we'll all have to get one. So I think they're, I think they're very cool. Uh, we, um, is, is that pretty much it for you, Heath? Yeah, I was actually pretty excited about the weather stations too, because I love storms. I, I just love storms, so. Have I you can't, ever done any wait. storm chasing or anything like that? Uh, I've done it once or twice when I lived in the River, river Valley. Um, storms are a lot worse there usually. Up here, I hear the sirens maybe once or twice a year. There, I heard them like at least six times a year. So. Have you seen a tornado before? Any? No, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I've actually seen I've actually seen a couple of tornadoes here in Virginia. Have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I grew up in uh, uh, the Panhandle of Texas, so I saw a ton of them. I I lived for a while in Kansas, so we'd see them there too. 
And I was actually in one. I was in the 1999 Salt Lake City tornado. Okay, and then I don't think they ever had a tornado on record ever. And uh, so one day I'll, I'll tell the story about what it's like to be in a real, you know, in, it was an F2 tornado and uh, what that experience was like. It's, it's not something you want to repeat, you know, it's uh, pretty crazy. Um, well, cool. So, you know, thank you very much, Heath. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have, um, uh, as I mentioned, we have the 19th Global Star Party coming up tonight. So we're not going to, this is not going to be a long program because we got, re I have to be back ready here in about an hour or so uh, uh, for, for that broadcast, but it should be a lot of fun. Uh, but we promise since it's the 100th anniversary that we would, uh, you know, give away a 100 degree eyepiece um, uh, for the show. And so we are, we're going to do a 5.5 millimeter 100 degree eyepiece. You are going to have to uh, listen to Jerry's questions, okay? And then you're going to have to send your question to uh, Explore Alliance. Let me write it down here, Explore Alliance. At explorescientific.com. All of you that uh, to to level the playing field on this so that one uh, channel that might be seeing or hearing these questions before another channel does uh, what we'll do is um, uh, we'll have uh, people uh, put in their answers for all those people that have done a correct answer it will be randomly one one person will be randomly picked out of that group and uh, that that person will be the winner so you do have to join the Explore Alliance, join for free. Um, and uh, uh, so you can just go to explorescientific.com forward slash alliance and join, um, uh, you know, and uh, we will announce on the next show, which would be, I guess, Friday, uh, who the winner is. So, um, and so that's, uh, that'll be our 101st show and uh, so I think that everybody understands the rules and how to play the game. So go ahead, Jerry, and ask your question. All right. So this is a fairly tough question because it's a high dollar eyepiece and you got to work for this a little bit. And it's, it's a little ironic that this question, you know, visual people use eyepieces, photographers use cameras. This question is about astrophotography. <laughs> so you have to be pretty knowledgeable. You have to want an eyepiece, and, and, but you have to be pretty knowledgeable to answer this question. Or you have to do some homework. You have to do some homework, right? That's basically what it is. So here's the question. When, when, you, do, <clears throat> when you do high resolution photometry, when you uh, measure the brightness of a star, Name three out of five types of noise that affect the measurement of the star's brightness. Wow. Now, yeah, I'm only I'm only asking for three of the five, so you know I think that's fair. So let me quit. Let me ask, ask it again. When doing high precision or high high precision photometry. High resolution photometry. Right. Name three of the five types of noise that affect the measurement of the star's brightness. Here we go. I will put that. Make sure you just copy the question and not the answers. Got all the answers. <laughs> I can see you cutting and pasting it. Mm -hmm. It's there. David wants to know is it in our book? It's, uh, I talk about it in my book, yes. Well, good. Okay. Mike but Weezer wants to know, is it film or digital? Digital. It's, it's uh, modern cameras. And, and these, these talk to the issues of uh, using uh, our CCD camera as an instrument to do measurements of stars. Mm -hmm. 
And this, this also talks to the training I've been doing a little bit to, uh, with our customer support staff uh, every week I do on Fridays. This is an example of one of the questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Jerry's tough on our customer service team. That's putting it lightly. I just want to instill a little bit of discipline. That's right. <laughs> I blame the military for that. Right. I don't need you to instill more. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, we started this, uh, that, that reminds me, because um, we started a program called Mentor. And uh, that's what Jerry's doing with the, uh, you know, our tech support staff is running through a whole mentor program uh, about astronomy and, uh, you know, not only our gear, but, you know, how, how to do, uh, uh, you know, setups and uh, polar alignment, uh, how to quantify uh, different aspects of, uh, uh, of astrophotography. And uh, he, he does get into the science part of this too. So it's very cool. Um, you know, I know all the guys that are sitting in there listening to it and working with it. Uh, are getting a great education, uh, and he tests them, and actually they had done very well, you know, so that, that's great. Um, but that mentor program is now starting to expand out uh, into our, um, in, in, you know, through our customer base and all the rest of it. And so uh, part of that is uh, that Gary Palmer has agreed to come on as one of the mentor partners. And uh, so you can, um, you can buy up time with uh, Gary pretty soon on our own website and um, and and learn from him uh, uh, you know at, at your at your convenience because he teaches people from all over the world so um, and so I'm excited about that and we'll keep expanding that as well so that we have a group of mentors that uh, uh, that can work with you on any aspect of what you want uh, in amateur astronomy. But um, at this point, I think that we've kind of uh, wrapped up our short show here. Uh, I really appreciate that you uh, uh, watched the 100th anniversary program and um, uh, the 100th episode. And uh, we're not in 100 years yet, right? I wish we could go on that long. It feels like it. <laughs> yeah, it feels. I wish we could go on that long, though. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I started a little late uh, for myself, you know, to try to make it that far. Maybe Heath will make it when he's 125. Yeah, 125, right. Yeah. Driving. Mm -hmm. That's right. You'll have to carry the torch for us. Uh, let's see. Anything else you guys would like to add, mention? Just that I've got good weather. i got good weather tonight. Good, so I expect some images coming out of you there. Yeah, you, you got good weather. We have clouds, and it's already getting nasty outside. So I actually got up this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning to take some pictures of the moon with the Did observatory. Mm -hmm. Nice. Dedication, dude. That's well, it, only takes, to it only takes five minutes to uh, start the observatory up and get pictures for it. He's for sitting there in his bathrobe, drinking coffee, starting up the camera. Yep. High life uh, must be nice. Bathrobe. It takes a it takes a lot of work to get to this point. I know it does. It's just fun to heckle you. <laughs> That's all right. You can heckle me all you want, Tyler. I don't care. He 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 does care. He's gonna he's gonna. I called out. I called Jerry last night because I didn't talk to him all day yesterday and it felt. Oh bad. yeah. <laughs> like Jerry, I just wanted to say hi. I know you missed me. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. And I helped Scott last night too. You didn't talk about that. Uh, we barely did. Um, uh, yeah, you know, we were, you know, uh, Jerry was helping me with my, uh, telescope. We found out that we had a mechanical, uh, problem in declination. We found out what it was. It was actually a, a, a tiny burr that was not on the worm wheel itself, but on the coupler. And when, when the cover was put back on for whatever reason, I guess it was just very, very close to the to the uh, uh, coupler itself, and um, uh, somehow it got pushed up against it. Maybe when I was, 
you know, because I was grabbing the telescope and just pushing it. It's on wheels. And so I was pushing it out the door. I think I was probably holding on to that uh, declination housing. So it's just like a little, it's just like a little cover that goes over the worm block. It's cosmetic and, you know, meant to keep the worm block clean and and it's it metal. Works. It's not like plastic. It's metal, right. so it's really it's metal. So you wouldn't think that it would be a problem, but I think I pushed up against it, and then that pushed up against the uh, coupler itself, and that's the reason why we weren't getting a movement in uh, declination. So um, I showed it to Alex uh, this morning, and he was looking at it. And he says, "You feel a little tiny bird? I could just barely feel it." And then we were looking at the cover and you could see where it had scraped on the inside and that was it. So uh, that's the reason why I took the cover off. The thing was working like a champ. Um, uh, you know, so uh, we did get a successful image of Andromeda, you know, towards the very end. And um, but it was kind of those fits and starts, you know, that uh, made it a little bit frustrating. And, you know, we were sharing all that with you guys and showing you what we were doing to work through those things. So, yeah, we did two and a half hours of broadcast last night. I think it was two and a half hours. Yeah, but it's fun to do that. So, and we'll do more of it. Uh, the, the real goal is, is that I want to make, you know, I want to find a platform that is intuitive enough, uh, you know, and I'm not sure that Nina is the right platform for this, uh, but we want uh, students to be able to take like a, uh, orientation class and then be able to operate this, you know, with a night assistant, whether it's myself or Jerry or both of us, um, uh, to make images. And, you know, my, my target group right now is the students in Nepal uh, that don't have a telescope. Uh, it would be a great test. They would be operating it from halfway around the world during the daytime when it's night here. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And that's Deep T and her team. So uh so uh hopefully you guys tune in to see her uh, last segment on that dt will also be back uh from time to time uh on our program to update us on what's going on with astronomy in nepal and with her group and uh all of that so it's going to be very cool um I, that's all i have to add right now Do, anything else guys nope i think that's good Okay. All right. So, well, then that is our night until another hour or so, and we'll be back with you with the 19th Global Star Party. So, uh, until that time, keep looking up, and we will see you. Right.